The need for electoral college in Nigeria. At Independence, Nigeria held great optimism. Political commentaries across the globe testified to inevitable emergence of a strong nation to lead Africa out of the dungeon occasioned by colonialism. It was an easy prediction. All indicators of a prosperous nation were available. Natural resources, the human resources, the capital resources were not lacking. We could not boast of an array of ideological political leaders across board. However, 60 years after independence, it will seem that the predictions were wrong. The country had a fruitful first republic and has ceased to progress. It has become saddled with the constant threat of insecurity, a, we a weakened security system. Worse, it became the poverty capital of the world. It is obvious that Nigeria has a leadership crisis inherent in her political system. The role of leadership cannot be overemphasized. It's leadership that directs, initiates, and combines other resources into meaningful development. The absence of it, as it is in Nigeria, is a state of continuous underdevelopment. Therefore, it becomes a necessity for a new ideology to educate, enlighten, and encourage political participation. The Electoral College Nigeria fills the void and the need with its mandate to usher in a new Nigeria. The Electoral College Nigeria is a civil service organization that was set up by individuals versed in practical politics and governance. The Electoral College Nigeria is non-partisan, non-governmental, and is an initiative of the Emerging Leaders Advancement Forum that's a brainchild of young Nigerians who span from politics, patriotism, development prof professionals, to everyday Nigerians born void of ideolo an ideological democracy in Nigeria. The college's objectives, to improve politicity within the electorate by providing civic education to the electorate, provide training for party delegates and aspiring candidates, to champion the cause for electoral reforms and constitutional amendments. In less than a year, the college has been part of student leadership summits in universities across Nigeria. It has also promoted actual electoral etiquette and processes in, election, in the election school of leadership in primary schools and secondary schools across Nigeria. Under the stewardship of its executive director, the college has continued to educate Nigerians during the COVID-19 pandemic, launching its online virtual class on politicity and governments for aspiring candidates and the electorate. The executive director has reiterated on many occasions that Nigerians with its high level of intellect are poor in political literacy. He stated that the key to this is understanding political offices, functions, jurisdictions as provided by the constitution. The college also understands that the quality of debates for political office don't necessarily show the electorate the jurisdiction of the office sought. It's noted this is a key tool to candidate selection and also the college held the Lagos East by election senatorial debate in which candidates were asked questions within jurisdiction of office helping the electorate make informed decisions and choices. Understanding the ongoings of the political terrain in Nigeria, what's most key is political literacy for the electorate to select individuals appropriate for office, to also help delegates with candidate selections and candidates in political office to understand jurisdictions of the office they serve in. Hence, the advocacy and work with the Electoral College Nigeria. So my question is, how do we all get involved in the Electoral College? I need to be a student there because a everything you question. just said I need to learn yeah there's so much to learn particularly looking at the line of what you really stand for and what you want to what you want to achieve as, a, as an electoral college where do we start from who has the right to be a member no it's actually a college is built for everybody in Nigeria we, we, we organize of course virtual and physical classes so anybody can sign up we just finished our fourth uh, cohort and Looking at it, we, of course, we expect to educate every Nigerian, but that's a big task. So we've, we've reduced the task to about 1 million Nigerians for 2023. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah, well. We hope that works because we need the information. Mm. It's not in the mainstream education curriculum anyway, so yeah, we might that's as well. I, I think growing up, there was this course we did, or this subject we did in prime, secondary school, which is called governments. 
at a point it was taken out of the syllabus. Really? Yeah, at a point. Now, what that did for us then was that it gave you a lot of history about what happens, mm -hmm. how, what you're learning, the, where you're coming from as a people. And that also lets you know the rights and the strengths you have as a voter. Mm -hmm. Right now, the reason I really buy into the Electoral College stuff, not just like the American one, but the reason I buy into it for Nigeria is that I believe that a lot of people need to be sensitized. We need orientation and reorientation. Re a lot of people that understood how the system worked back then, they've forgotten how it works. Yes. A lot of people have forgotten what it even means to vote, how to vote. A lot of people don't even know how to vet their, their candidates. And most importantly, what, one thing I wish this electoral clerk could do is to say, we focus too much on the presidency. The focus is not the president. It's the senators, the parliamentarians, the state government, the local government chairman. I'm sure all, the, all, all of that is there. No, right? you know, like we, we run it, we run it. There are 22 modules in, in the course known mm -hmm. as Polytracy 101. So there are 22 modules. It takes you, it walks through the local governments, the, the legislative houses, okay. you know, down to uh, the local government. It also goes to post elections, which is result coalition and other points, you know, yeah. issues with, issues with um, judicial uh, mishaps when it comes yeah. to debating mm -hmm. points. And when we go all, all through the entire system mm -hmm. of politics and governance, mm -hmm. as, uh, you know, we, we might not have good examples in Nigeria, but of course we try to create out of what which exists. Oh, we have, yeah. So we teach what already is, what, what already, what should be, which is by the constitution. Then we will tell you what is and we'll tell you what the problem in between the two are. Mm. And that's how we, 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 so that we leave you with a clear picture of how it should be. Okay. We go as far as even teaching our students manifestos and campaign messaging. Now, this is not for them to run for office. If you choose to run for office, beautiful. Well and good. But so that the electorate should understand what to expect. So when a legislator comes to you and says, I'm going to give you light, I'm going to give you road, you already know it's not possible. Beyond it's not within purview. the jurisdiction. Yes. It's not within oh, the jurisdiction. Her purview. Uh, well, yeah, her purview. Right. Yeah, you know, we have to be delicate. <laughs> we, you know, yeah. he's her purview. He's her or her purview. <laughs> so it's not within his or her purview. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we also get to the point that we try to make clear that governance, there's something we preach the most. Which is? Governance does not have any gender. Meaning, there's no position that a man or woman cannot achieve. Governance mm. is governance, is deliverables. It's not based. And we, we also do something funny within our class system, which I know she would love. Where? Is where we, we do not take in a class if we do not have at least 49% female participation. Yeah. Okay. It's something we don't do. Okay. I will tell you, we've, we've pulled that right. You know, you know. We've, pulled, we've pulled that across well time. And I would say also even within the structure of the Electoral College Nigeria, we have volunteers across the structure. I will tell you, women make up at least 73% of its positional okay. positions. Mm. We even don't, I remember a, a funny thing that happened. We were to hold a meeting to prepare for the fourth cohort on Val's Day and the women were like, no, they can't attend. <laughs> <laughs> You know, <laughs> human face. <laughs> so, so we try to work within that, and we also understand that in Africa, if you bring the women into into political participation, you're not only bringing a woman in; you're bringing another generation in. Yes. Mm. We have understood that within the uh, yeah, we've we've understood that within the electoral college, and we've we've seen the rise of women that you know have been our students. The we we have even our KPIs are massive. Like um, we have a, a situation of I think within the second cohort. And someone decided he, he, he was going to run for office, but this time within a professional capacity. And I remember it was Asaba, and he was the MBA chairman of Asaba, and they've never had somebody under 50. And this guy was under 40, and you know, he, we, we, we taught him some things, funny theories. We have a minority X theory, which means you can go against the system and probably win is how you go about it. And he used that and he wrote a review for the college. So it's good to see that the chairman of MB Asaba is, is a student. And you know, this is not only for political oh, positions oh, as we term it, mm. even professional, even professional, professional positions, yeah. running your associations, mm -hmm. we've also been able to affect people's directions. Yeah. And all if that. we provide our own power and our Water. water and every other amenity. We might as well provide our own education. They are private schools, so this exactly. is just one specialist school mm -hmm. that we mm -hmm. need. Yeah. And I wish it could be mainstream, 
maybe we'll get there. If, if like I, you said, you've partnered with. Yeah, uh, we're partnering. Yeah, we par we partner with multiple institutions mm -hmm. and trying to deliver this. Um, we've we've gone as far as um, even initiating partnership with the Cardinal Business School, where mm -hmm. we're trying to bring governance into every faucet. <coughs> excuse me, of um, life in Nigeria. So we've also tried with um, international partners, of course, we have a few, and we're expanding at, at, at the rate we can. We yeah, don't have any yeah. grants yet, so we're, fun okay. we're funded internally, but all, all right. you know, when they say who is bankrolling you, yeah. it's just a lot of people <laughs> that really, really love the believe country the system, and yeah. believe in the system. And mm -hmm. we've, we've tried to open up partnerships and we'll keep yeah. trying to. I, I think likely when, when you said uh, you you opened up a partnership from the outside. My major concern was, which is one of the challenges we've had with politics in our part of the world, is that we, we often import strange methodologies and approaches from the outside. Oh. But I, I mean, you know, because let's take for example, you know, if I'm suffering from, if I have a typhoid and you have a malaria and I attempt to use your cure for typhoid, I'll only aggravate my issues because I wouldn't get healed. And that's what we do a, a lot of times. The West is far ahead. There are so many things, they have a structure. We don't have a structure. So if we try to directly import whatever is done abroad into our system, it might not work because we don't have a structure that will support it. Mm. So most of the things we should do is what you're doing now, which is whatever you're doing now is geared at building a structure. Homegrown. Yeah, homegrown. Letting people identify what they need. Because if, for example, now, they, I mean, you're starting this abroad and you're telling them, okay, this is where you need to vote. Hey, I know how to vote. I know the structure. I know what to do. Mm. But most importantly is that what you said about you not just being political office holders, but even professionals. Because if you can groom people to be thinkers individually, it's easier to migrate into politics. Mm -hmm. As against just grooming them for politics, they haven't applied all the theories they've learned at all. But if you're a secondary school, a university student, and you venture into a post in your school or something and from there you grow and you see how the system works you can grow to become a better politician because politicians are like doctors you don't become a doctor when you get into the hospital you become a doctor then you're admitted into the hospital i can't just walk into the hospital and say okay i want to I have a, i aspire to be a doctor and i want to start you know then okay now call you doctor and start the process no you go to school you graduate you have the degree and you're called a doctor then an hospi a hospital takes you over and i think that's the way politics is your mind or must be, be. should be yeah okay. in that for our, for our state your mind must be prepared such that when you're going in there you're going in there with the idea of deliverables what to do for the people what you want to achieve I mean, just working immediately. As against getting there, they say, okay, how does the system work? And I tell your oh, guy, you need to do this. And you say, okay, let's do that. And the system gets messed up. Oh, madam, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, your oh, guy, madam. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, you know um, the electoral college, you know, we are nonpartisan. We've also trained within um, intra party, on an intra party okay. basis. So we work with whether it's APC, PDP, mm. STP. And we understand the truth about things. And that is because we clearly understand that no party is bad. It's the players True. within a party that is bad. True. Like I always give an example, and I'm sorry I'm going to say this on air, but because it's going to be painful and a lot of people are going to laugh. But I'm an Arsenal fan, but that does not mean I hate football. Why are you guys laughing? You see what I said? No. You guys, <laughs> I just so I'm an, Arsenal, to you. <laughs> I'm an Arsenal fan. I'm an Arsenal fan. Mm. And no matter how many times Arsenal loses, <laughs> it's sad to say, <laughs> loses some games. Um, I still don't hate football. But mm. what we've done with politics is that, or in Nigeria, is that we've cho we, we hate politics because That's of the it. players. And That's you can't it. hate politics because of the players. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make it a bad game. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you bring in new players, that's which is what we are trying to do. Or you try to improve the game within the system. Yeah. Like, um, we, I've forgotten we, which party we were training. And there was, uh, we, we were going over the delegates. And delegates were saying they didn't know they were not supposed to collect money. I don't want to mention the party. No, it's all right. We they, know. Didn't, they didn't know. They were not they supposed know. to. They didn't Awareness, know. Awareness, education, That's a, teaching. So this is the gap that the Electoral College Mr. is trying bridge. to bridge. Okay. Joyce is next after this break. Don't go anywhere.